Hi everybody, Steve from Steve's Makerspace, and today we're in P5.js, and what you're seeing are some things that I've created using Perl and Noise. I don't know if I would call this art, but it's pretty interesting, and if you're interested in creating generative art, understanding Perl and Noise is essential to that. I'll be going through code, starting with some simple examples and gradually getting more complicated, and I'll also be talking a little bit about how to change the colors. So it all starts with a simple Perl and Noise field, I can hit start on this and get a new Perl and noise field. With this, I'm going through the width and the height in a for loop, and then I'm getting some noise, and the noise is gonna be between zero and one. I am using the I and the J, and I'm multiplying by a resolution, the resolution I've got here. If I make this a smaller resolution, it will be more smoothly changing. If I make it a higher resolution, it will change more quickly. So I get that noise number between 0 and 1, and then I'm going to map that number from 0 and 1 to 0 and 100, because I am using color mode HSB, and I want my brightness to be between 0 and 100. Uh, I've got a little bit of alpha in here that's at 40, and then I'm drawing some rectangles. Uh, they're little bitty rectangles. You can also use points to fill in your Perl and noise if you want. Rectangles, for some reason, take less time to make than points do. I don't know why, but that's the way it is. Now in this example, I've added some specific color mapping. I've taken the noise and multiplied it by 10 and then I'm checking to see if the n is less than 2, then I'm giving it one hue. If it's between 4 and 6, I give it another one. I just pick these numbers at random, and that's what's happening here. So I can hit start, and we'll get another field, but it's using the same hue numbers. Now we'll get a little bit more complicated. Instead of mapping those numbers that I just came up with, we're going to use a color palette table. And so I've got this color palette table here, and this is full of palettes. This row right here is one color palette. It's got an R and a G and a B of one color, and then an R, a G, and a B of a second color until you get to the RGB of a fifth color. And there are 676 different color palettes. I'm sorry about my camera, I don't know why it's doing that. So I have to load my table in preload. I call it a table, and then I'm going to pick from that colored palette table a palette. I'm going to call that my palette, and then I've got my R1, G1, B1. I'm getting from that table uh, whatever palette I chose. The N is for the floor of the noise. So in this case, I'm taking my noise value and multiplying it times 5 and then flooring that. So this is going to give me a number either 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. So now I'm going to get my R, G, and B from whatever color uh, I picked from the table based on the noise and I'm going to fill based on that R, G, B. So here's that. So it's looking a little bit better. We'll hit go again, and we get a different color palette. So this is pretty good, but I would like to get more detail in here and have the colors to be repeated. So how do we do that? We're gonna take a little diversion to this example. I have imported this image of this rainbow of the hues from zero to 360. And what's happening here is I'm getting a color from here, and I'm mapping this color onto one of the colors from the color palette table. So colors from red to yellow are going to become this light green. I can also map based on Perl and noise. So imagine that this black to white is Perl and noise. I can say, okay, anything that's going to be really black is going to map to this light green, and anything that is white is going to be mapping to this. And this might be representing zero, uh, in the spectrum of Perlin noise. Uh, this is representing like 0.8 to 1. 
But here, see this shift factor number? Uh, I've got it at one right now. If I change this to two, then you're gonna see that the color palette is mapped twice, once here and once here. And so this green color could be coming from this, or it could be coming from this area over here, or this area over here. Uh, and if I change this to three, you'll see the color palette is shown three different times. So the way I'm accomplishing this is I come up with this SF number, which is 360 divided by the shift factor. So I've got the hue and the SF number, and I divide one into the other, and then I get the decimals from that division. It's a decimal between 0 0.001 and 0.999. Now I can use that decimal to map. Same way I was mapping before, there's five different mappings, but this way I can reuse the colors from the color palette table. So back to the Pearl and Noise shapes. I've got the shift factor in here and I've got it at random. I'm mapping my noise to a number between zero and 360, uh, and then I'm getting my decimals. Then based on those decimals, I'm getting my RGB from the color palette table. I'm doing stroke RGB and I'm drawing point. I decided to do points instead of rectangles this time. I've added a couple other features to this version. I've got it so that I can click on the canvas to get a new image. And also I've got this save JPEG button. So if I click on this, I will get a JPEG of my image. So we're getting a little bit more complicated now. Let's keep going. Now here, I've kicked it up a notch. So what I'm doing differently here is I've created an array. We have a random palette and a random shift factor, and we have the factor, which is gonna be 10,000, and that gets calculated for each number of palettes. So in this case, I've got three palettes, so it's gonna put nine numbers into the array. And we go through our I's and J's and we go through our K's again so that we can pull stuff out of the array. Here we're calculating the different noise values. Then we're figuring out the decimals from the shift factor. That's going to give us the color number that we're going to get from the color table. We're going to get those RGB values. We're going to add those RGB values up until we finish going through the K's. And then I get an average RG and B and I draw my points for that average RGB. Now this works pretty well for having between one and four color palettes. The other thing I added, and I'm not sure if it really makes a difference or not, is I added a second Perlin noise uh, so that one Perlin noise would have a low resolution and the other Perlin noise would have a higher resolution. And then I'm adding those two Perl and noises together and getting an average. I'm not sure if that actually makes a difference or not, but that's what I did. And I've got up here the option to have a simple pattern, which would be only using one Perl and noise, where, or a more complicated pattern that would use two Perl and noises. So simple pattern equals false. And now we get something like this which I don't know if that's more complicated really than what we just were looking at. Oh yeah, but there was one other thing I wanted to show you. You see here where I have the word trippy, uh, the factor is figuring a new Perl and noise, and this is why I'm putting the factor into the array, just in case you want to use this. If I take this out, we're figuring a new Perl and array field every time we do the palette. So instead of one Perlin array field, we're gonna have three different fields and it comes out like this, very trippy stuff. It looks like, I don't know, a swimming pool. I don't prefer it, so I'm gonna keep it commented out, but I'll leave it in in case you wanna use it. Now, if I increase the number of palettes, uh, it is gonna take longer to generate, unfortunately, but there's also a bit of a problem. So we'll increase that to six from three. So here we go. We got 
something that's more complicated. There's more colors, definitely, uh, but it's also more muted, kind of getting to be a bit gray. And this is because I'm using the average. When you're getting an average of several RGBs, you tend to start getting some grays. And if you're averaging hues, you tend to lose the reds at the end and start to get cyan in the middle. If you use alpha to layer the colors, you tend to get the last color that you put down, the 50% of that. In my last video, I talked about the problems with combining colors and two ways that I came up with for combining colors that result in vibrant colors with a lot of variety. A link to that is in the video description. But let's now look at my final product, which includes a fix. I'm using six color palettes to generate this image. I do everything I did before coming up with an average R, G, and B. So this right here is a formula for remapping the average red. So the larger the number of palettes you're using, the larger the number of R's you're averaging, then the narrower the range of that average is expected. So I'm taking the expected narrow range for that average R and expanding it. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's the best way I can explain it. So I do that for the R's and do that for the G's and the B's, and then I finally draw the RGB point. So the final result is going to be less gray, even though I'm using six color palettes. Now I've got one more thing to show you. This is not an improvement, but it's a variation. This is a final rendering that looks fuzzy. So instead of just using points, I'm using begin shape, end shape, and a vertex. And here I'm showing a larger example. So every time I hit go, it's making a circle, but the radius is varying as it goes around the circle. And then I take away the stroke and I'm using the color fill. And I'm also not drawing very many of these, so this actually takes a lot less time to render. Now I got the idea of this fuzziness, this watercolor sort of thing, from this guy, Algorithmic Art. So I'll leave a link to his video in the description. So anyway, I think this is an interesting variation. It kind of looks like a textile. So I'm going to wrap it up here. The code for this is in the video description, and I'll have a few of those examples that I was showing you in the video description as well. Uh, if you like this video, you can give it a like, consider subscribing to the channel, ring the bell for notifications. Comments are always welcome. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.